The Middle East is one of the most tumultuous regions in the world. People have grown accustomed to the perpetual conflict between Arabs and the Israelis. However, according to Bible and the research of contemporary scholars, Arabs and Jews share a common ancestry and the descendants of the same people. So why do they chronically feud? And is it even possible to achieve peace between them? On October 7, 2023, which coincided with the Jewish holiday of Simhat Torah, Palestinian terrorist groups, with the Hamas being the largest among them, launched a large-scale invasion of Israel from the Gaza Strip. They flared up to 5,000 rockets into Israel. Subsequently, the militants breached the border and infiltrated nearby Israeli communities and military installations. Mass killings of both civilians and military personnel, violence against women and hostage takings were reported. In response, Israel, for the first time since the Yom Kippur War in 1973, declared a state of emergency and launched airstrikes on targets within the Gaza Strip. This escalation represents the most significant challenge to a peaceful resolution of the Israeli-Palestinian issue. Today, we delve into the history of a conflict that has persisted for many decades. Watch this! Even though the State of Israel was formally established in 1948, the roots of this conflict stretch back over a century. In the latter half of the 19th century, the Zionist political movement emerged, marking the beginning of the Jewish struggle for their state. This aspiration dates back to the times of the Roman Empire, particularly in 70 AD, when the Romans captured Jerusalem and destroyed the Second Temple. During this period, the term Palestine was introduced by the Romans, aimed at erasing the memory of Jewish presence in the region. Initially, Palestine referred to a geographical region encompassing what is now Israel, the Gaza Strip, the West Bank, and parts of Jordan. This region holds historical significance as the homeland of the Jewish people and is the setting for much of the Bible. However, following the Roman conquest and the mass expulsion, Jews became a minority in the region. In the 7th century, it became part of the Islamic Caliphate, an Arab Muslim state, formed after the death of the Islamic prophet Muhammad. Over time, the majority of the population adopted Arab identity. By the late 19th century, the historical land of Palestine had become part of the Ottoman Empire. Despite their dispersion throughout the world, Jews maintained their culture, language, and faith, which often led to varying degrees of persecution and discrimination in Christian nations. There was a profound desire to return to the land of Israel among the Jewish diaspora. The emergence of the Zionist political movement gave them renewed hope. In the late 19th century, mass Jewish migration to Palestine commenced, the first two major waves of Jewish repatriation, known as Eli, were associated with the violent pogroms that took place in the Russian Empire. The migration continued until the outbreak of World War I, in which the Ottoman Empire sided with Germany. During the war, Arthur Balfour, the Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs in Britain, issued a document known as the Balfour Declaration, expressing Britain's support establishing a national home for the Jewish people in Palestine. Consequently, Jewish volunteers, known as Zionists, formed the Jewish Legion, aiding British forces in the conquest of Palestine. The Ottoman Empire lost in World War I, and the Turks withdrew from the land. After the war, the League of Nations, under the Treaty of Versailles, granted mandates to colonial powers over territories previously administrated by defeated nations. The mandate for Palestine was entrusted to Britain. The ultimate goal of the mandate was to fulfill the Balfour Declaration, paving the way for creating a Jewish national homeland. Mass Jewish immigration resumed, driven by the influence of Zionist propaganda, leading to a steady Jewish population growth. The settlers were trained in agriculture and could develop the economy. 
Initially, the League of Nations included territories in the mandate for Palestine that encompass modern-day Israel, the Palestinian Authority, Jordan, and part of Saudi Arabia. However, the influx of Jewish immigrants into Palestine resulted in conflicts with the local Arab population. Arab unrest occasionally escalated into armed uprisings. After intense Palestinian uprisings, Britain restricted Jewish immigration and separated Transjordan from the Palestine Mandate. Transjordan comprised three quarters of the total territory and later became the independent kingdom of Jordan. Watch this! In the 1920s, over 80,000 Jews arrived in Palestine from Eastern and Central Europe, primarily in response to a surge in anti-Semitism in Poland and Hungary. This group mainly consisted of middle-class families, who settled in growing urban centers and established businesses in trade, hospitality and light industry. The increase in Jewish immigration fueled Arab nationalism and strained relations between Arabs and Jews. Jewish immigrants increasingly purchased large plots of land from wealthy Arab landowners, most of whom lived abroad. However, these lands were cultivated by small peasant tenants, and as a result, thousands of Arab families had to leave their land and relocate to the outskirts of cities, significantly reducing their social status. Jews aimed to cultivate their own lands and provide employment for the growing numbers of migrants. Many Arabs lost their jobs, resulting in rising unemployment. In 1933, Adolf Hitler rose to power in Germany, leading to a massive influx of refugees fleeing Nazi persecution. Before the outbreak of World War II, 250,000 Jews had migrated to Palestine. This influx was brought to a halt by the Arab Revolt for 1936 to 1939, forcing the British to restrict Jewish immigration. In 1939, the British government issued the White Paper, which set a quota for Jewish immigration to Palestine at 75,000 over the next five years. Subsequent migration required Arab consent, but immigration continued illegally. The British intercepted ships with immigrants and placed them in camps, established in places like Mauritius and Cyprus. Obstacles faced by refugees and the reluctance of other countries to accept them resulted in the death of millions of European Jews during the Holocaust. Despite all the challenges, in 1940 the Jewish population of Palestine reached 450,000. There was no obligatory military conscription in mandatory Palestine, but around 30,000 Jewish men and women voluntarily joined the British armed forces. The majority of the Jewish population in Palestine, despite their discontent with the British restrictions on immigration, recognized the need to defeat Nazi Germany first and foremost. They participated in building roads, bridges, and factories for the production of munitions, weapons, and auto parts. In contrast, Arab nationalists who welcomed the mass extermination of Jews in concentration camps awaited Nazi victory to ensure the total eradication of Palestinian Jews. Their leader, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, Amin al-Husseini, met with Hitler in 1941 and made a pact to unite against the Jews, promising to foment an Arab uprising in Palestine. Watch this! After World War II, the Jewish population in Palestine had grown to 33%, compared to 11% in 1922. The British administration after 1945 became embroiled in the escalating Arab-Jewish conflict. They could not find a compromise between Arabs and Jews and voluntarily withdrew from Palestine, entrusting its fate to the new formed United Nations. On November 29, 1947, during the second secession of the United Nations General Assembly, the UN adopted a resolution on the partition plan for Palestine, which proposed the establishment of both Arab and Jewish states. Jerusalem was designated as an international city under the administration of the UN to avoid conflicts over its status. 
the Jewish population accepted this plan, but the Arab League rejected it as unjust. The plan's approval was made possible due to the support of the major victorious powers, the USA and the USSR. The Soviet support came as a significant surprise to both Arabs and Jews. Many historians argue that Moscow, seeking to strengthen its position in the Middle East, primarily aimed to undermine British influence. The USSR hoped that the new state of Israel would become a socialist stronghold in the region under Kremlin control, counterbalancing the Arab states aligned with the West. The day after the UN resolution, the war, known in Israel as the War of Independence, began. In the initial stage, which lasted until the declaration of the State of Israel, both Jewish and Arab paramilitary groups sought to gain maximum territory and control over communications right after the British withdrawal. The British were preparing for their impending evacuation and minimally intervened in the confrontations between the groups. The first stage of the war was marked by acts of terrorism and retaliation by both Jewish and Arab factions. On May 14, 1948, the day before the end of the British mandate in Palestine, the State of Israel was proclaimed. The Declaration of Independence of Israel spoke of the emergence of the Jewish people on the land of Israel and their aspiration to return to their historic homeland. It also mentioned the catastrophe of European Jewry and their long-suffered right to a sovereign state. The United States was the first country to de facto recognize Israel, with President Truman making the announcement just 11 minutes after Israel's first Prime Minister, David Ben-Gurion, read the Declaration of Independence in Tel Aviv. On the following day, May 15, Egypt, Syria, Lebanon, Transjordan, Saudi Arabia, Iraq and Yemen declared war on the Jews of Palestine, with the goal of destroying the new state. The forces of the Arab armies that invaded Palestine amounted to about 54,000. Israel's armed forces at the time numbered between 34,000 and 35,000. In the initial stage, the Israel Defense Forces engaged in fierce defensive battles, but by July they transitioned into a counteroffensive, pushing back the Arab armies. Israelis captured the Galilee in the north and Beersheba in the south. In March 1949, they took Iliad, a port on the Red Sea. As a result, Israelis not only repelled the attack and preserved the existence of their state, but also significantly expanded its territory. The hostilities continued until July 1949. Around 6,000 Israelis lost their lives during the war, which is 1% of the country's population. Watch this! The aftermath of the War of Independence saw around half of the territories designated for the Arab state and Western Jerusalem occupied by Israel. The remaining Arab territories were occupied by Egypt and Jordan and remained under their control until 1967. The line that separated these forces after the armistice was named the Green Line. The war resulted in mass displacement and deportations. According to UN estimates, from April to December 1948, over 700,000 Palestinians became refugees. In the Arab world, these events are referred to as the Nakba, which means catastrophe. Every year on May 15, Palestinian Arabs observe a minute of silence and hold mass processions. Keys are a symbol of Nakba, representing the right of Palestinian refugees to return to their homes. Jews do not accept this name, seeing it as a direct juxtaposition to the Holocaust, the catastrophe that befell European Jewry. The war led to increased violence against Jews living in Arab countries. In the territories of the former British Mandate of Palestine, Jews were either expelled or killed and their property was confiscated or destroyed. Cruel anti-Jewish pogroms took place in Yemen, Syria, Egypt, Libya, Iraq and beyond. 
As a result, over 800,000 Jews were expelled or fled to Israel and other countries. Over a decade, Israel's population increased to 2 million by 1958. In 1952, after a military coup in Egypt, Gamay Abdel Nasser came to power. He drew closer to the Soviet Union, receiving financial and, most significantly, military aid. The USSR sent weapons, military equipment and advisors to Egypt to assist its army in facing Israel. In 1956 to 1957, an international conflict arose due to Egypt's nationalization of the Suez Canal. In response, the Israeli military captured the Sinai Peninsula and the Gaza Strip. However, under pressure from the USSR and the USA, Israel withdrew from the seized territories and UN peacekeepers were deployed on the Egyptian-Israeli border. In 1964, the Palestinian Liberation Organization PLO, was established with Yasser Arafat as its leader. The organization adopted the Palestinian Charter, which denied Israel's right to exist and state, that a Palestinian state should be established within the boundaries that existed during the British Mandate. For many years, the PLO used both propaganda and widespread campaign of terrorism, with support from the USSR and the Arab League. Watch this! The Six-Day War was a brief but significant conflict in the Middle East. By the mid-1960s, relations between Israel and its Arab neighbors had deteriorated into a series of border clashes. In late May 1967, Egypt, Jordan, Iraq and Syria formed a new anti-Israel coalition, planning to push the Jews into the sea as Egyptian leader Abdel Nasser had called for. Algeria, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia and Kuwait also offered their support to this coalition. Soviet analysts developed a plan in which Israel was to be provoked into initiating the first strike, thus allowing the Soviets to portray Israel as the aggressor and withdraw international support. However, the Israelis made an unexpected move. On June 5, 1967, in an operation named Mokt, meaning focus in Hebrew, the Israeli air forces destroyed the runways and nearly all the aircraft of the Egyptian, Syrian and Jordanian air forces. The success of this operation gave Israel air superiority, and over the next few days they bombed the enemy's ground forces. By the end of the war, Israel had gained control over territories more than three times its pre-war size. Syria lost the Golan Heights, Egypt lost the Sinai Peninsula and the Gaza Strip, and Jordan lost the West Bank of the Jordan River and East Jerusalem. Three years of relative calm were shattered during the Yom Kippur War. On October 6, 1973, Egypt and Syria launched a surprise attack on Israel. Egyptian forces crossed the Suez Canal, and Syrian forces invaded the Sinai Peninsula. Initially, the situation didn't favor Israel, which was cut off guard. However, over three weeks, the Israel Defense Forces managed to turn the tide of the war, halt the enemy's advances, and push them back. Israeli forces entered Egyptian territory and they stopped just 20 kilometers from Damascus in Syria. The war ended only two and a half weeks after it began. After the war, without much hesitation, Jews began building settlements on the occupied territories. The Arab oil-producing nations implemented economic and political measures against Israel's alias. OPEC countries imposed an oil embargo on Western European countries and tripled the price of oil. This led to the 1973 oil crisis. Additionally, 28 African nations severed diplomatic ties with Israel. After two years of negotiations with Egypt and Syria, agreements on troop withdrawals were reached. Israel withdrew from territories it had occupied during the war. Arabs no longer attempted to launch a new war, but shifted to a tactic of continuous raids and terrorist attacks. 
after their defeat in the Six-Day War, the Palestine Liberation Organization was expelled from Jordan and established its base in southern Lebanon. Palestinians used Lebanon as a base for attacking northern Israel. Moreover, Lebanon has been experiencing a civil war between Muslim and Christian communities since 1975. Israel decided that instead of constantly fending off attacks from militants, it would be better to conduct a full-scale war to resolve this issue. In June 1982, Israel initiated a military operation in Lebanon called Operation Peace for Galilee, aimed at destroying the PLO bases. Despite significant military aid from the Soviet Union, Israeli forces took the Lebanese capital, Beirut, and dismantled the organizational and military structure of the Palestinians. The PLO was forced to move the headquarters to Tunisia. In Israel, this operation was initially not recognized as a war. Despite the military victory, Israel's international reputation suffered due to high civilian casualties in Lebanon. After losing its position in Lebanon, a militant group called Hamas formed in the Gaza Strip. Watch this. In 1977, Israel's parliamentary elections, the Knesset brought victory for the Likud party. The new prime minister, Menachem Begin, invited leaders of Arab nations to join him at the negotiation table. Egypt's president, Anwar Sadat, finally broke the customary sound of silence in response to peace calls. Talks were initiated and in 1979, they led to a peaceful agreement putting an end to three decades of hostilities between the two countries. Israel withdrew from the Sinai Peninsula, and internationally recognized borders replaced the previous ceasefire lines. Following the peace agreement with Egypt, the situation started to shift. In 1975, U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger declared that the United States would enter negotiations with the Palestine Liberation Organization if they acknowledged Israel's right to exist and renounced their terrorist activities. On November 15, 1988, taking advantage of King Hussein of Jordan, relinquishing sovereignty over the West Bank of the Jordan River, the State of Palestine was proclaimed in Algeria. This was more symbolic as, at the time, the Palestinians did not control any territory. Yasser Arafat pledged to recognize Israel in the future and condemn terrorism in all its forms. The following year, he was elected as the president of the State of Palestine. The early 1990s marked the beginning of the first secret talks between Palestinian and Israeli leadership, edging closer to a peace conference. However, in August 1990, Yasser Arafat publicly supported Iraq's invasion of Kuwait, causing the Palestinians to lose support from the Arab monarchies in the Persian Gulf. In 1991, the Madrid Peace Conference took place. It involved representatives from Israel, the Palestinians, and Arab countries. In the end, all parties agreed to the principle of land for peace, which meant relinquishing terrorist activities in exchange for recognizing Palestinian autonomy. Arab nations following Egypt's lead agreed to engage in direct negotiations with Israel, thereby acknowledging it as an equal partner. The most significant progress was made in Israeli-Jordanian negotiations. In October 1994, they concluded a peace treaty with the US President Bill Clinton present, making Jordan the second Arab nation to sign a peace treaty with Israel. In early 1993, Israel's Foreign Minister Shimon Peres began secret negotiations with the Palestine Liberation Organization. Norway acted as an intermediary. After lengthy grueling negotiations on September 13, 1993 in Washington, D.C., on the White House lawn in the presence of U.S. President Bill Clinton, Yasser Arafat and Israeli Prime Minister Itzhak Rabin signed a joint declaration. They named it the Oslo Accords since the negotiations took place in the Norwegian capital. The parties recognized each other and committed to ending hostilities. 
the Palestinian Charter was amended to exclude the clause calling for Israel's destruction. In return, Israel agreed to the creation of the Palestinian National Authority in areas under Palestinian control. This document forms the basis for the continued functioning of the Palestinian National Authority. Arafat pledged to halt terrorism and Rabin promised to release Palestinians convicted of terrorism. Following the signing, a historic handshake took place between Arafat and Rabin. However, despite the agreement, other Palestinian organizations like Hamas, Islamic Jihad and the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine did not accept its terms and escalated their terrorist activities. Watch this! Yasser Arafat failed to stop Palestinian terrorism and its propaganda machine. The Land for Peace concept didn't quite pan out. There were dissenters both inside and outside of Israel. In 1995, an Israeli ultranationalist extremist fatally shot Prime Minister Itzhak Rabin. Palestinian terrorism escalated, reaching its peak during the Second Intifada from 2000 to 2005. Simultaneously, Israel continued building settlements in the West Bank and new Jewish neighborhoods in East Jerusalem. The Palestinian side labeled these actions as land theft, according to the Palestinians' Israeli settlements on disputed territories obliterated any chance of a two-state solution. In 2005, Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon unilaterally withdrew Israeli forces from the Gaza Strip evacuating Jewish settlements there without reaching an agreement with the Palestinians. Subsequently, the radical Hamas movement seized power in Gaza. Israel, in response, halted the peace process in the face of terrorism and demanded the Palestinian Authority take a result stance against terrorism. However, a significant number of Palestinians supported terrorism, viewing it as an effective means of pressuring Israel. The Oslo Accords remained largely unimplemented. Key issues included the division of Jerusalem, claimed as the capital by both Jews and Arabs, as well as the fate of Palestinian refugees. The problem of additional territorial concessions, the Jewish settlements in the West Bank, continued to grow. The peace process was finally undermined. The situation worsened with the absence of a clear leader on par with Yasser Arafat, who passed away in 2004. His successor, Mahmoud Abbas, repeatedly expressed public support for terrorists. Hamas' attack on Israel on October 7, 2023, shattered hopes for a peaceful settlement. Who might benefit from this? Primarily, the Iranian regime, which still considers Israel a sworn enemy and refuses to recognize its right to exist. Iran does not have many allies, but one of them is Russia. Strangely enough, the attack took place on Vladimir Putin's birthday. He was among the few world leaders who didn't call Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to offer condolences. On contrast, Hamas expressed gratitude to Russia for its support. It is not surprising as two terrorist regimes are likely to find common interests and points of convergence. The wave of anti-Semitism incited by Russian propagandists following the terrorist attack is a vivid confirmation of this. It's too early to make conclusions about who supported Hamas from behind the scenes. But one thing is clear. The Russian regime stands to gain by diverting global attention away from the war in Ukraine and redirecting it towards the Middle East. Watch this! Unfortunately, the tragic events of October 7, 2023, left Israel with no choice and the situation is moving towards an escalation of the armed conflict. However, it's important not to equate the entire Palestinian population with Hamas. The ordinary Palestinians living in Gaza have become hostages to this terrorist organization. 
The head of the Palestinian Authority, Mahmoud Abbas, said that Hamas does not act on behalf of the Palestinians and does not reflect the aspirations of the Palestinian people. Peace negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians have been going on and off for over 25 years, but the conflict remains unresolved. Hamas' attack has derailed all attempts to achieve peace. Events are unfolding right now. What awaits the two peoples living on the same land? Is peaceful coexistence possible for Palestinians and Israelis? Or are these hopes elusive? To be continued. Mm-hmm.